I'm Matt Vandercliff from the Indian Ocean Rim Association Blue Carbon Hub. Today we're going to demonstrate how to core in a seagrass meadow for the purposes of measuring organic carbon. To collect the core from in the seagrass, we need some basic equipment. So of course we need the core. We're going to use some PVC pipe today. This one has a tapered edge. That edge is designed to help you push the core through the rhizomes in the seagrass and down into the sediment. This pipe is designed to be cut open in the lab and subsampled afterwards. If you don't want to cut your pipe open and you want to reuse it, you can have a core that looks something like this, where you have the holes drilled into the core so that you can subsample the sediment later. We'll be taping up these holes and showing you how to use that core soon. To push the core into the sediment, today we're going to use a sledgehammer. You could also use a post driver to do that job. In order to stop the hammer from chipping the top of the core, we could use a few different types of equipment. You could use something that's specially designed, like this core cap here, or you could use something very simple, just like a piece of wood. Other equipment that we will need include a ruler. We're gonna use a metal ruler today, but you could easily use a plastic one. A knife, or you could use scissors. Some tape, we're going to use some silver tape today. You could use any tape as long as it sticks underwater. Some rope, a hacksaw or similar blade, and of course, our field data sheet. We'll demonstrate use of all of these through this video. The methods that we describe in this video are also described in the Coastal Blue Carbon Methods Guide, which is produced by the Blue Carbon Initiative and it is available online. You can also find it on the IORA Blue Carbon Hub website. Before starting with the collection of the sediment cores, always record the GPS coordinates of the core location. When taking a core in the seagrass, if you want to collect information about the above ground biomass of the seagrass, make sure the seagrass is very well lined up inside the core and no seagrass is caught under the edge of the core. If you have seagrass caught under the edge of the core, it can push the sediment down as you're pushing the core down. Today, because what we're doing, we don't need the above ground biomass and we're in a very thick meadow of Posidonia, we don't want to worry about the nail effect and so we're going to clear the seagrass so that we can use the core unimpeded. We've cleared the seagrass canopy from the area that we want to core. So the next step is to get our core ready, the tapered point facing down and the core nice and straight and we lower it down onto the top of the sediment and then we can start pushing it down and rotating it. Now where we're doing it, it's shallow, we can stand and it's very easy but it's not that much more difficult to do it while diving if you've got a few people. So our core has gone in very nicely. When you're pushing a core through seagrass and down into the sediment under the seagrass, some compaction might occur. So we need to take a few measurements that will allow us to calculate the degree of compaction or compression that has occurred. So we've already measured the outside length of the full core. That was 150 centimeters. <clears throat> now we measure the outside length of the remaining core that's above ground. So Anna, that is exactly 740 millimeters. And the inside length of the core. That is 933 millimeters. So you can see we've had a fair bit of compression happen as we've pushed this core into the sediment. 
So we're about to take the core out now. If we just take it out like that, the sediment is going to fall out the bottom. So we need to create some suction at the top to stop that from happening. We're going to use some tape to do that. You could use a cap if you've got something like that, as long as you've got a way of fixing it on nice and tight so that you create that suction that stops the sediment from falling out the bottom. Time to take the core out. If it's a shallow core, you might be able to just pull it straight out. This one's in a little bit deeper, so I think we're going to have to use the rope. So we've taken our core from the water and got it into the boat. This is now full of water. While we're in the water, we measured the depth from the top of the core, inside the core to the surface of the sediment at 93.3 centimetres. We've marked just a little bit above that so that we can cut into the core and just let that water out. So we've now trimmed the core. In this case, we've trimmed it just above the surface of the sediment. So there's not very much space left. You could easily just leave a little bit more space than we've done, in which case you could fill it up, for example, with the leftover tape that you've taken off. But now so that we can transport it back to the laboratory and we can lie it down during that, we want to seal it up so that the sediment doesn't move during transport. So if you're using the cores with the pre-drilled holes, of course, when you pull the core out, you won't have the suction unless you cover the holes. So let's do that first. So now we've collected our reusable core. Everything about core collection was exactly the same, with the one difference that instead of cutting the core to let the water out, we've just peeled the tape back. So now here we have the sediment surface, 700 mil above the bottom of the core. And if we peel the tape down one more, we can show where the sediment is. And we're using a modified syringe insert into the core and remove the subsample. So that's how we collect a core from a seagrass meadow for the purpose of measuring organic carbon. Thanks for watching, we'll see you in the next video.